course, when we start talking about a new subject, we always have to define some basic terminology. So we're going to start out with that. At the beginning of each chapter um, in the Mansfield text, there is a list of key terms. And then um, looking at chapter one, basic principle, principles of kinesiology, um, those are all good. Yeah, you should know all those, <laughs> all those key terms that it lists there. And conveniently enough, they're all in the chapter. So kinesiology, of course, is the study of movement. And we're going to talk about different types of movement. We're going to start out um, defining our terms. So kinematics, it's the branch of biomechanics that um, describes the motion of something. They refer to it in the book as a body. It doesn't necessarily mean a human body, but a thing. Um, without regard to the forces that produce the motion. So um, we're just going to talk about the different types of motion since kinesiology is the study of motion. Uh, so translation and rotation are the two main types of motion. Translation is where all points in the body move together at the same time. So um, there are two different types that will define rectilinear motion, which is motion in a straight line, and curvilinear motion, which is motion in a curved line. So I have my snow-related pictures here. Um, the little kid on the sled going straight down the hill, that's rectilinear motion. It's a straight line. Um, the, the skier making um, turns as they go down, it's a curved line. That's curvilinear motion. But every point on the body is moving together to get from point A to point B. So you can think of translation as getting from point A to point B. Rotation is the movement of a body, meaning a thing or a part, around an axis. So um, in the picture, there's someone flexing their elbow. It's the movement of that body segment around the axis of the elbow. So in um, you can have situations like with this guy, where um, he's running and he's got rotation going at his joints and translation going as the whole body moves from point A to point B. So you can have both types of kinematic movement within the same activity. Um, we're also going to define the difference between passive and active movements. So active movements are movements that are created by an active muscle. Um, so the person is actively moving a part of their body by themselves, like flexing an arm over the head. If the therapist says to the patient, okay, I want you to raise your arm up as high as you can, the patient does it under their own power. That is an active movement. Um, passive movements, on the other hand, are generated by sources other than muscular activation, such as gravity, or um, another external force moving that arm. So if the therapist says, OK, I want you to relax, and I'm going to lift your arm up over your head, um, the therapist is providing the external force. The patient's not doing anything. The patient's muscles aren't doing the movement. That is a passive movement. So the difference between active movement and passive movement is um, an internal force versus an external force. So the external force can be gravity. It can be. Um, the therapist or you know some other thing moving your arm like a continuous passive motion machine that's a passive movement um, or a um, in the book they give the example of the resistance of a stretch ligament um, so a stretch lig the a stretch ligament provides resistance that might then cause that limb to move so that's a passive movement it's not actively being caused by the muscles so um, in defining um, terminology, I'm hoping that none of this is new to you, that you learned it all in anatomy and physiology, and this is just a little, nice little review. Um, a lot of the um, kinesiology terminology um, has pairs of um, words that go together that mean opposite things. So the first example of the pair is anterior and posterior. Anterior means toward the front of the body and posterior means towards the back of the body. And usually when we're using these comparative terminology terms, um, we're usually saying something is anterior or posterior to something else. Um, so I could say the tip of my nose is anterior 
um, to my throat, because it's more towards the front of the body, if that makes sense. Um, or I could say my C7 vertebra um, spinous process is posterior to the tip of my nose because it's towards the back of the body. So um, a lot of times we're um, comparing the location of two um, landmarks. So um, the midline we're going to define as an imaginary line that courses vertically through the center of the body. So um, we're just saying, yep, we're dividing in half, that's our midline, and we will talk about things with relationship to the midline. So the next pair is medial and lateral, and medial means toward the midline, and lateral means away from the midline. So for all of this terminology, we are referring to anatomical position as the home position. So as I'm sure you know from anatomy and physiology, anatomical position is the human body standing up, eyes facing forward, palms facing forward. In anatomical position, by definition, all of our joints measure at zero degrees. That is our baseline, that's our anatomical position. And then everything else is relative to that. So when we're um, defining terminology, we always are referring to anatomical position. So medial is toward the midline of the body, lateral is away from the midline of the body, so we could say the eyes are lateral to the nose. Um, or the arms are lateral to the body. Or when we're in anatomical position, we could say the thumbs are lateral to the fingers, or the fingers are medial to the thumbs. So it all refers to anatomical position. The next set of um, paired words is superior and inferior. So superior means above or toward the head, and inferior means below or toward the feet. Um, there's a, another pair that are similar to superior and inferior, um, cephalad or cranial, which means towards the head, and caudal or towards the feet or tail. So we're always talking about human beings, so we're talking about um, bipeds, when you're talking about quadrupeds, superior and inferior don't necessarily apply, so they use cranial and caudal for head and tail. And often, instead of anterior posterior for um, non-bipeds, they use dorsal and ventral. And you will also hear that uh, terminology used with humans. Um, specifically with the hands and feet, we'll talk about the dorsal surface um, of the hand and versus the palmar surface, this is the palm of your hand, and then the foot, the top of the foot is the dorsal surface, and the bottom of the foot is the plantar surface. So we'll talk about that specifically when we get to those areas of the body. But um, dorsal and ventral, cranial, uh, cranial and caudal um, quadrupeds, it also applies to bipeds, but superior and inferior um, apply directly to, to the human body as well. Proximal and distal. Proximal means closer to or toward the torso. Distal means farther away from the torso. So you could say the shoulder is proximal to the elbow and the elbow is proximal to the wrist. And the wrist is distal to both the elbow and the shoulder. So we're talking about relationships. So the um, couple, a few more pairs, um, superficial and deep. Superficial is toward the surface, the skin of the body, and deep is toward the inside or the core of the body. So we can say the skin is superficial to the muscles and the bones are deep to the muscles. Um, you could say your heart is deep to your rib cage. Um, you could say your... Um, your certain muscles are superficial to other muscles that lie um, deeper to the inside of the core of the body. And we'll talk about individual muscles and their relationships when we start talking about muscles specifically. Um, when it comes to muscles, um, the pair that we talk about is origin and insertion. And usually the origin refers to the proximal attachment of a muscle or ligament. So it's the attachment of a muscle or ligament that's closest to the core of the body. And the insertion is the distal attachment of a muscle ligament, so the one that's farthest from the core of the body. So often we'll talk about muscle, uh, regular um, concentric muscle contraction, and we'll get more into that in the next couple chapters. 
um, where the muscle is shortening, the insertion moves towards the origin. And then um, we'll talk about certain instances where there is a reversal of muscle function where the origin moves towards the insertion. And um, different great things can happen when you have reversal of muscle function. When somebody's lying down, we can describe them as either prone or supine. Prone means lying face down, supine means lying face up. Um, a lot of times when you're charting, you're going to specify that you um, did a particular intervention to a patient in a certain position. Um, so prone and supine are the words that we use to describe those. Um, the other one that you'll see a lot is side lying, and that's pretty obvious. You're lying on your side. Um, we'll use the side lying position a lot of times in manual muscle testing to um, change the relationship of gravity to a certain movement. So we'll talk more about that.